Hey, how's it going? I'm Josh from 91 Tech, and some of you may remember I recently did a video discussing mini PCs and their viability with emphasis on the $600-ish dollar mini swarm PC I was sent. It was actually kind of a heck of a machine with some impressive integrated graphics, CDR5 RAM, the works, and I was pretty blown away by how much you could actually do with such a small and affordable package. And so today we're following that up with two more mini PCs to look at, specifically one in the high-end price bracket and one in the lower end. We're going to talk about both on their own, but then also compare the value to each other. Is it more worth it to spend more on a mini PC, or is it better to go low for the sake of saving some cash? There's not going to be any sole correct answer, as everyone has different needs and tastes, but in the very least, we can examine the contrast seen in the approaching $1,000 gaming-aimed absolute beast of a mini PC in the B-Link GTR 7 versus a much more reasonable $400 to $500-ish dollar mini swarm mini PC called the NAB5. For double the price, you would hope the GTR 7 would have double the performance, but we'll get to that. First, the unboxing experience for both PCs is fairly straightforward. We'll start with the Minis Forum Venus Series NAB5 here. There's quite a few different spec versions for this thing. The one I have is currently $440 on Amazon. We open up the box, we get the paperwork, and then we get the actual PC itself with a little bit of a confusing sticker there telling me to push in. That's actually just to get the top of the PC off so you can see the internals, not to pull it out of the case. It's just a little Little confusing because it's right there. Anyways, uh, if we actually lift it out and pull it out of this little bag here, we can see the PC itself. It's small, compact. The build here is a silver plastic. Kind of looks aluminum, but I don't think it is. It's just like this really hard plastic. It feels fine, uh, simple, and that's all it needs to be. The top panel piece here, though, does feel significantly cheaper. It is very plasticky. So like that sticker tells you to, you just click it in to pop the top off, kind of like an old CD player or something. And that's super convenient for opening it up. I like that. And you can even fit a 2.5 inch drive in here, apparently which is impressive. But the sticker itself is really irritating because when I try to pull it off, it left behind some adhesive and glue and stuff. So you'll see some shots here with it kind of like half pulled off. And eventually I do take it off. I had to actually clean the thing, isopropyl alcohol. But if we look at what we get for accessories, power cord, power brick, HDMI, some mounting stuff for the internal hard drive slot. You can actually stick in a 2.5 inch drive in here, believe it or not, to go along with the 500 gig M2 SSD. So everything's straightforward enough. So let's go ahead and look at the GTR7. This box is pretty darn fancy with the big logo on the top there. It's definitely a more expensive feeling box and when we open it up, lift off the top, we initially get a hello and if we lift this off here, we're presented with the paperwork. Nothing too crazy. If we take that off, there's an orange ribbon which is there to kind of help you pull out the PC. I struggled with this somehow, but I did get it out and then we can tear off the plastic from the actual computer here. If we do that, the PC itself here actually looks really awesome. So it's in a dark green color. There's a few options. There's an orange and a blue as well and then a gray if you're boring. I quite like this dark green. It reminds me of kind of the midnight green iPhones. And I actually really like the design of this mini PC. So for price wise, this one's going to cost you at least probably around $800. And there's definitely a big contrast between these two computers just by their design alone. You can tell which one looks more expensive. If we continue looking at that box for the GTR7, we can see inside we get the power adapter accessories. Nothing too crazy. Now something I really do like though, the power brick itself is like on the actual plug. So you don't have a big power adapter brick that has to sit on the floor. Along with that, this little rubber tab on the bottom of the mini PC, once we pull that off, that's how the power cord actually attaches to the PC. So it's magnetic and it just sits there, lays flat, feels quite secure to me, and it means that you shouldn't accidentally unplug this thing in any way. I wouldn't mind Apple stealing this idea, to be honest, it's pretty great. Uh, although something Apple does with a Mac mini that neither PC here does is have the power supply itself on the inside of the computer. Now doing so is impractical because it makes thermals more difficult and it also makes the entire PC bigger. So while it's convenient to have it on the inside on the Mac Mini, I don't expect that from these PCs here. And to compare them, I mean, they're about what you would expect for the price point. The B-Link will cost you about $800, and it's aluminum, it feels nice, it looks nice, it's premium, it's got that kind of gamer-esque design that's not going to be super appealing to everyone, but I dig it. One nice little element of the design on the GTR7 is that little black square in the corner there, that's actually a fingerprint sensor. So when you're waking up your computer, you can just rest your finger on that, and boom, you're signed in. Nice little convenience to have. The Mini's form computer is much more simple. It's made of plastic, it's taller, but has a smaller footprint and thus should take up less desk space. Both computers have a really impressive port selection. That's something I really like to see on mini computers like that, especially since I used to use a Mac mini and uh, well, Macs aren't exactly great with port selection at times, so it's nice to see it here. Both these computers will look great on your desk or even in your entertainment unit, which I think might be a specific use case that, especially with the GTR7, might be kind of enticing for the right user. So design-wise here, what you would expect and 
and uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the specs. So the specs we're about to go over are kind of typical-ish for around this price point, right? So you're looking at an i5 in the Mini's form PC. It's a 12th generation i5, 12450H, and this brings integrated Intel UHD graphics. Now, this is not going to be any sort of powerhouse. It'll do the job though, and it'll do it just fine for pretty much anything, except for heavier tasks like video editing and stuff I wouldn't really want to do on here. But when it comes to pretty much what people use PCs for, which is browsing the web, I don't know, word processing, spreadsheets even, all that sort of thing, this PC should do the job absolutely no problem. We've also got 16 gigs of DDR4 RAM, a 500 gig M2 SSD, and again, if you want to expand on the storage, there is a 2.5 inch drive slot within the computer itself, using the included mounting stuff. Then the GTR7 comes with the Ryzen 7 7840HS. It's got a PCIe 4 SSD totaling a terabyte of storage. It's got 32 gigs of DDR5 memory at 5600 megahertz, and it's all tied together by the gaming-oriented integrated graphics with the Radeon 780M. I don't know how to explain just how impressive these integrated graphics are. This is about as close to a gaming PC that a non-gaming PC can get. Now, it looks kind of gamery, but without a graphics card, you're severely limited with what you can do. Generally, the 780M may as well be like a low-tier graphics card because it gives you about that performance. So now, obviously, at these two price points, it's unfair to compare them head-to-head, -head, but I want to show kind of the contrast. For around 400 bucks versus 800 bucks, what do you get? And the simple answer is with the Minis Forum, in this case, you get a solid performer that can do the basics no problem and can handle most day-to-day -day tasks without issue. But if you want to add anything more intensive onto that, such as gaming or video editing or anything like that, that's where the GTR 7 really pulls ahead. Not only is it faster anyways, just having much better specs, but the 780M is shockingly capable. I'm talking it can run Cyberpunk 2077. So the Minis Forum video that I did just a while back, it had the 680M, and that was basically the best iGPU ever in 2022. The 780M is the best iGPU ever, but in 2023, iGPU standing for integrated graphics. Now, I did try comparing these two in certain things such as Cyberpunk, and Cyberpunk is completely unplayable on the Minis Forum, as you would expect. Intel UHD graphics, yeah, no, you shouldn't expect anything from that, and that's what we get. But on the GTR 7, we were getting half-decent frame rates at medium settings, which is what it set it at automatically. So at lower settings, and I believe there are mods to help with performance, the GTR 7 could play Cyberpunk. Now, it wouldn't look great, but it could. So I installed 3 d Mark on both machines to give us kind of some just numbers to throw around, and 3 d Mark actually has specifically an integrated graphics benchmark to run, which is cool. But I put both computers through their paces, and in Night Raid, the Minis Forum computer ended up with a score of about 12,000. The GTR 7 and its Radeon 780M, it got a score of about 31,000. Now that is a crazy difference. It's about triple their performance. So the GTR 7 for limited gaming is absolutely capable, and I would expect as good or better performance than something like the Steam Deck, for example. So if you were to run like Steam Big Picture mode on here, or even Steam OS, you could absolutely have like a mini console set up with this thing, like uh, under your entertainment unit or something. The Minis Form, I wouldn't use it for that. It could stream games, but it's better as kind of an actual PC rather than a gaming oriented machine in any way. Now there's not a whole lot else I want to talk about here. Both these PCs are solid performers. You're just getting a big jump in that performance as well as kind of the overall premium nature by going for, well, double the price with the GTR 7. I don't know if I necessarily recommend either of these computers. It depends on the user. And I do think there are some issues when it comes to translations and sort of things with Chinese companies like B-Link that you don't have if you're buying from like, you know, an American company like Apple. Minis Form's been pretty good from my experience, but uh, B-Link specifically, they sent me a BIOS update file and instructions to do it, and I, I couldn't figure it out. And I, I do this stuff, like I know how to use PCs, but it just wasn't working for me, and so I kind of just gave up on it. Hopefully that hasn't hindered the performance too much for me. Uh, it, see, it hasn't seemed to, like everything's run pretty well. That being said, I think you are getting tremendous value from both of these computers, and mini PCs in general definitely aren't bad anymore, and it's impressive. I can't bring myself to recommend going out and buying a mini PC specifically, especially over a regular desktop, especially if you're building that desktop by yourself, but for someone with limited space or someone who just really likes mini computers, and those people do exist, yeah, I mean, these sorts of things are kind of a no-brainer. I think they're both good value for what they are, and I've been mighty impressed with performance, especially with that Radeon 780M. It's actually crazy. There's some definite potential with what you could do with this sort of computer. There's also a GTR 7 Pro that they didn't send me. I think it has a Ryzen 9 in it instead of the 7. I don't know how much more expensive or better performance would be, but from what I have here, I've been pretty darn happy to take a look at these. So I think with that, we're right about done here. Basically, I don't recommend one over the other. It depends on your price bracket, but I think they're both good computers, and I think it's a good example of the kind of contrast between 400 versus 
$800. Huge jump, especially in gaming. Minis form is going to be probably better for the basics simply because it's cheaper. But if you want to pump a lot out of your machine, the GTR 7 is capable of that. Surprisingly capable. So uh, with that, thank you so much for watching. If you found this video interesting, maybe hit that like button and consider subscribing for more tech content. You shout out to the channel members for making all this possible. As always, I'm Josh from 91 Tech, and I will see you all next time.